two, one. living on a disk floating through space with a tiny sun Hey, I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that does the stupidity what Professor Dave did to Flat Earth Dave. Um, you've probably seen it. Uh, if you haven't, then you really are in for a treat tonight because recently Professor Dave, one of the smartest people that I know on the internet, um, debated one of the dumbest people I know on the internet, um, Flat Earth Dave, otherwise known as D-I-T-R-H, uh, Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Um, it went as we would kind of think it went. Um, so I thought it would be a good idea to bring Professor Dave on so that we could have a chat about that. So I've done just that. Professor Dave, welcome back to the channel. How are you doing? Hello, hello. Very good. How are you doing? Uh, excellent. I've been, I've been really, really looking forward to this one. Since watching that, in fact, I've watched that debate maybe five times because there's so much dumb to see. You can't take it all in in one go. Um, be, before this, we had, we had a chat a couple of days ago about what we were going to discuss. Um, and I'd gone about halfway through the debate again at that point, making notes about things that we are going to be able to discuss. And it was about 20 points long. And now after going through the entire hour, I mean, it's almost a dumb thing a minute. It, it's incredible. So um, I think you did fantastic for your first debate against the Flat Earther. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's pretty miraculous. Um, I can't for the life of me figure out why he agreed to do it. Uh, <laughs> but he did. And it's comedy gold. So <laughs> Yeah, I, I really, I mean, because Sean Atwood isn't like a Flat Earth channel or anything. You know, and they just set up a random debate between a flat earther and you. Um, I've said this before. I think Durf did it with you because he saw you as an easy mark. Yeah, you've done a few flat earth videos, some of you know the best ones, one with nearly 10 million views, or about 10 million views, uh, absolutely destroying flat earth. But you've never talked to a flat earther, debated them face to face. So he saw you mm -hmm. because of that as an easy mark. Right. You, oh, he doesn't know the script. He doesn't know the things I'm going to say, you know, but luckily for you, you're a smart person and, you know, people like me who know their scripts. So we had a good chance to go through and, uh, you know, yeah. you went in there prepared and it absolutely showed. Um, and so, it's, yeah. it's very it's very easy to watch two videos and go, oh, he says the same crap in every single video. It's exactly. Not, yeah. It's very hard. So uh, yeah. yeah, I think he saw you as an easy mark, and and that was a massive mistake for him. He won't he won't dare talk to me because I've done over six hundred flat earth debates. So he will not talk to me because he knows I know the script. But he thought you didn't, and boy, that was wrong. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> did you just want to have yeah. a little chat? Uh, you know, tell people about how you felt the debate went, and um, you know what 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 you've had coming out of that on your channel and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I did exactly what I wanted to do and uh, was very, very pleased with it. I think that people were under the, I mean, I, I'm definitely getting some pushback on my channel of people, oh, he's so mean, he's so mean to the poor dumb guy. And it's like, look, this is not, this is not a poor dumb guy. Like, I'm not picking on the dumb guy in class. Like, <clears throat> this is a con man who lies for a living. He has this dumb flat earth app, which uses globe-based GPS data. To, that's how he makes money. He's lying for a living. And um, this is a con man. And the reason that uh, that the that the the denigration and the humiliation is necessary is because this is the only thing that's going to work for his followers all of these arguments have been made i've made dozens and dozens of arguments and they're just ignored and their response is well you don't have the balls to debate dave weiss you you're, you're not going to debate dubay you're not going to debate these guys it's like okay okay fine i'll debate him i'll body slam him tear his throat out and take a <laughs> dump in the wound are you going to respond to that like, if all you want is to see us face off, I will humiliate your hero gladly in front of you. Yeah. And so I just, I just want people to understand that this is not like, oh, you know, it, it, this was not 
smart versus dumb. This is this is facts versus a con man yeah. who's got to script wise. You were just doing uh, and, the same thing that you've done in all your videos. I mean, you were just doing the same thing you've done in all your videos, ripping yeah. flat earth apart with facts and some scathing to his humor. face. Yeah, but you know it, it was mm -hmm. to his face, um, and it, it was a thing of beauty. Um, and I, I get the comments sometimes. Well, you're so mean to the flat earthers. You're so mean to the well. Be nice to them, but you know they are an insult to everything that has made the world what it is. You know, and yeah. they've got a cult-like mentality, it, which I think is extremely dangerous. The attitude wouldn't be necessary if they would listen to reason. If I were to, if somebody were to ask me genuinely a question <clears> like, <throat> huh, like I heard a flat earther make this argument and that made sense to me. Do you have a response to that? I go, of course I do. Da, 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 da. And then if they went, oh, well, yeah, I guess that does make sense. Huh. Then, no, no insults would be necessary. It's the no. it's the willful ignorance uh, of of just ignoring everything. And Weiss himself did that. Just every time I shut down what he was saying, his response was either "Stop being a dick" or "Can we please change the subject?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> how, Moving on. Like, from how that. does somebody want me to have an honest conversation with a person like that? There's no yeah. chance. This is no uh, chance. He accused you of being a dick by. Um, trying to act all nice and being the good guy and um, but you were being you know a aggressive and scathing because that's what it needs so he felt yeah. like he had some kind of moral high ground and every time you backed him into a corner he used that as a oh stop being a dick stop bullying me stop picking on me right. you know whilst telling you that everything you've studied your whole life is a lie and you're actually an idiot you know <laughs> and scientists are all frauds and, and on a conspiracy. So, yeah, just I want people to understand this is not how I'd behave with somebody who holds genuine beliefs. No. No matter no. how stupid they are. This is not that situation. This is a con man. This is how you deal with con men. I would do the same. I do the same to Kent Hovind. I do the same if I were to meet with somebody from the Discovery Institute who's pushing lies about uh, evolution. This is how I treat They're them too. You. This They're is what con you. men get, <laughs> not dumb people. So I really yeah. want people to make. I, I see it as almost the same as like you know the scam baiting stuff. You know, we're we're getting the con men out in into the wild to let the world see what they do, uh, and. Yeah parading how stupid the entire thing is i mean come on it, it, yeah. it, it's ridiculous i had some some comments that were like man at first i thought dave is being really mean but then i listened to that guy talk for 10 minutes so i was like you need to go harder than this yeah. like this guy somebody needs to get rid of this stuff so yeah. that's uh, me I'm i didn't think timid. you were too mean i will do this uh, i thought you did better than i ever could in the debate um you eloquently explained everything you answered all of his questions um, and you just completely shut him down. Um, but yeah, I thought we could go over some of the dumb things he said, um, because there were so many, honestly. I I'm not kidding, right, guys? I I'll just quickly share this with you. This is the list of dumb things Dave Weiss said in a one-hour debate. Look at it. <laughs> How can somebody make so many dumb points in one hour? It, it was impressive. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, so the first thing he did in the debate, which is some of the... I've had flat earthers do quite a lot, right? Uh, any further ado, let uh, us bring oh. in the guest for the flat earth debate! That uh, shouldn't be playing, one sec. Uh, sorry, one second. Right, so when when he brings you in at S, um, and they, they introduce you, um, instantly, flat earth Dave goes on the attack, right? Starts attacking you saying that you straw man uh, hit, hit the flat earthers and everything. And then he does this thing, mm -hmm. um, which he does quite a lot. He wants to get common ground with you. Um, did you see what he was doing? Did you know why he was doing that? I mean, I don't know. Not really. I don't really care. <laughs> well, yeah, it, what, I it mean. Is, it's one of his tactics where he tries to put you on the back foot by getting you to agree with some stupid points with him. And mm -hmm. it... It, it it's a power play. It's a total power play to try and seem like the one that's in charge of the conversation. Um, and you, you didn't fall for it straight away. You just completely shut him down. I, I mean, they were just dumb questions. Yeah, that everything was dumb. But I want to get straight to one of the, some of the really dumb stuff, which is around here about five minutes. ...of things based on light. So when you start talking about gases, you, uh, you, sh you show me immediately that you don't even know what spectroscopy is. So you do not know the ways in which we figure out things about celestial objects. You literally don't even know the definitions of the words that represent the techniques that we use. So why are you even talking about it? So 
So my, my question is, spectro spectroscopy needs to be in a container. Otherwise, you don't know what you're looking at. That phrase is one it's of the dumbest, dumbest sentences yeah. ever uttered by a human person. Spectroscopy <laughs> needs to be to say about it. in a container. Like... Yeah, I mean, it, it, he the, like what this does is just shows you the desperation with which he needs to stick to a script, because he hears words he doesn't understand, and then he goes, "Where can I filter this into one of my dumb talking points?" Oh, maybe that sounds. I think that sounds a little bit like atmosphere needs a container. So let me take this unrelated thing he's trying to say and jump yeah. to this like in a completely nonsensical manner. Like, <laughs> so so he's trying to connect what the argument of this, gas you know? needs a container with spectroscopy because. He's right. saying that spectroscopy measures gases. So, therefore, you can't do spectroscopy without a container because gas is involved. Yeah, but is it? I mean, spectroscopy is measuring light. You can do spectroscopy yeah. on, on, you know, we're just measuring light that's emitted. You can do it with a solution. You can do it with... Yeah. It's, not, it's not specific to gases, so it's just... Gases need to be in a container, so spectroscopy needs to be in a container. It's like, what the hell I mean, are that, you that talking about? That sounds like t-shirt material to me. Spectroscopy needs to be a con I'd buy that with a Professor Dave face on. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty good. That's a good shirt. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I mean, and that was like right at the start. Um, how did you feel like if straight at the start, him saying that? How did that make you feel the rest of the debate was going to go? Yeah, I mean... This is what I learned from the... I only had two debate format interactions prior to this. Kent Hovind and Jesse Lee Peterson. And, um, you know, the Kent one didn't go as well as I wanted it to just because I let him do his, you know, enact his slimy tactics. Yeah. Mm. And so I, that was a big learning experience for me in realizing that I just can't do that. I can't let anyone do that ever again when I am interacting with a con man. And so with him, I just made it a point like, Every dumb thing he says, every time he tries to try, tries to to ignore what I'm saying, every time he tries to change topics, every time he tries any of his tactics, I'm going to either stop him or shine a spotlight on it, and that's what I did for an hour. And uh, you know, it's I I knew that's yeah, how it was going to go. You didn't go, let him obviously. get away with with going on with his nonsense. You're like, no, stop! You said a dumb thing, and I'm going to explain why it's dumb. It, it was it exactly was <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, like this, this is, and this is what Kent Hovind does too, is he just tries to pack 10 lies into one sentence. And so either you don't interrupt him and there's way too much for you to address. It would take 20 minutes to address the lies yeah. in one sentence, which you don't have time to do because equal time for blah, blah, blah. Or you do interrupt him and then he just whines about how you're interrupting him. So this is the tactic of the con man to, to try to set up a win-win situation where they can either get lies through or you're a meanie mean pants and so the only the only way to do it is to just in real time uh expose that tactic right yeah this is why you're lying this many times i'm interrupting the lie this is why i'm interrupting you like you just have to explain yeah. it to them like they're an idiot and uh hope that the crowd hope that the viewers can understand the necessity of what you're doing because it is a necessity there's no other way to talk to these people when so. you debated Kent Hovind, did he hit SpongeBob with a hammer at you? So, so, so many times. Oh, In God. fact, I think to my testament, uh, even though I allowed him to gish gallop a little too much, I also uh, directly obliterated enough of his points to irritate him enough to drive <laughs> him towards doing that annoying immature behavior with the SpongeBob and all that stuff to the point where even his own fans were like, wow, Kent's kind of being a douche right now. Uh, you know, all this crap with the SpongeBob. So uh, yeah, but but definitely that that one inter uh, like that one interaction was a masterclass in how to debate con men, and I learned so much from that one interaction that yeah. I'm just never going to let that happen ever again. So Weiss is the unfortunate hapless victim that had to be <laughs> the one that I have agreed to encounter next. But I think after that, people I don't think any flat over know, debate you again. Although I did see a, an open letter to you. From Nathan Oakley, um, inviting yeah. you to uh, debate him, in which he also referred to Dave Weiss as the low-hanging fruit of Flat Earth. 
which yeah. I thought was interesting. I love it. Every time, as soon as I demolish the Globebusters, they're like, oh, they're controlled opposition. And then I humiliate Weiss, and they're like, oh, he's a low-hanging fruit. It's like, you guys are all equally stupid. You're yeah. all morons. You're all liars. And no, I'm not going on your channel where you just mute me every time I'm telling you why you're wrong. Like, I'll gl Oakley, Dubay, I will gladly debate any of these morons on a neutral platform. There's uh -huh. no problem with that. But uh, they're not going to do it. No, <laughs> they're, they're not. doesn't even debate at no, all. He um, demands but, debates uh, from people like Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, however, when people like me and, and MC Toon and you challenge him to debate, he runs for the hills. I was the only Glober that he featured in his movie level, the first one. I was the only Glober that he featured in it. Yet he refuses mm -hmm. to even speak to me. I'm blocked everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, no, well, he's never never going to do that. <laughs> no, never. More more stupid because he goes straight from saying spectroscopy needs to be in a container to not understanding the moon. Us and the moon. Gases? The moon is solid. The moon is a solid object. How do you know that the moon is solid? How come you can't see it during a new moon? How, why can't you see it during a new moon? Yeah. Because, do you understand how vision... Yeah. Um, that, that was quite stupid. So, a new moon is the first phase of the moon when, when it's, you know... It's all, it's all dark, right? And it's still there. He thinks the moon disappears when, when it's dark. Yeah. Uh, um, and you were saying that, uh, and I've actually got some other ones, but there's so many pictures of the new moon um, where you can actually see the craters. Yeah, you need special cameras and stuff, but yeah, you can. there's plenty of pictures of it. I, I should have mentioned that at that time. I was more focused on explaining to them why... What he said is unbelievably stupid. Yeah. Uh, you know, we see what is illuminated. The side that's not illuminated, you know, Earth shine is not uh, but, not that bright. But um, it, it, and also, it, it was such a jump from you where you know he just instantly changed the subject about you know he'd been destroyed by not knowing what spectroscopy is, and then just instantly started changing the subject <laughs> to, to to the moon, which is something he does quite a lot. Unrelated, yeah, yeah totally yeah. unrelated. Yeah, this is what all this is what all charlatans do. Th this is the gish gallop. I mean, this is the gish gallop in action. Is um, just uh, let me in the middle of a sentence change topics as seamlessly as possible so people don't yeah. notice. I mean, that time I let him do it because, like, it, <clears throat> if you want to gish gallop into something that I can immediately destroy in five seconds, sometimes I'm going to let that happen. But yeah, you know, I'll, I'll go back and admit that actually here, even though the mission was to nail his feet to the ground. Um, I, he's, I still did let him gish gallop a little bit, but you know, I could have, I could have let him gish gallop even less, but it's just that, um, he had no chance of stumping me that I just like, wherever you want to go, man, you want to go over there, I'll kill you over there. You want to go over here? Like, you know, it's not like a, like a smarter con man who like might kind of get me with something and, and, uh, I'll have to like, oh, I don't know how to answer that really quick. There's nothing he could have said that I wasn't immediately going to eviscerate. So you were ruthless, didn't matter where I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You you were in yeah. charge of that show, um, and it was it was kind of unfortunate for the hosts and the producer because they were having some tech issues, right? So they they couldn't get there, yeah. they couldn't run the show the way that they wanted to. However, that gave you the opportunity to run the show in the way that you could just destroy Dave and shut him down and finish your points, you know? And it, yeah, I mean. <laughs> I didn't really care. I had slides. I mean, I had more slides. I had slides for the night day thing. I had sl I had w I just one slide for eclipses that shows what eclipses are. And I was going to make him go, how do you explain this? This is very easy to understand. But it's like, I mean, in the end, it's a circus sideshow no matter what. It's just yeah. him saying dumb things and me explaining how unbelievably stupid they are. So do I even and need the visuals? I mean, I had them ready, but whatever. Yeah. You, know, you explain matter. them quite well. You explain it quite well without them. Um, uh, so, yeah, he, he had an issue with eclipses as well. Position with the infrared or anything has ever seen the moon. Can you think of why? Can you think of why? Can you think of a much, much brighter object that is right there where the moon is? Well, during the corona total, of the sun, which is thousands of times brighter. What you're doing right now is you're basically saying, I'm going to shine a spotlight directly into your eyes. And then you tell me if you can see a firefly two centimeters to the right. Like, what are you talking about? Do you Dave, seriously what? not understand this stuff? A child can understand so, this stuff. So when you're throwing out words like spectroscopy, what's the difference uh -huh. between, between spectroscopy and astrospectroscopy? Yeah, so... <laughs> total, you, total pivot, total yeah, pivot. Yeah, exactly. Cannot he answer the question. Not, yeah. not understanding eclipses, so you were explaining eclipses, 
And what's he do? He goes back to spectroscopy and makes up a word. Um, <laughs> it's mean, funny. Like, I was pretty sure it wasn't a word, but I didn't want to, like, you know, it, uh, like, I, mean, I wasn't positive it, 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 it wasn't a word. It seems to be an amalgamation but... of two words because astronomical yeah. spectroscopy is a thing. And that is the measurement of stars with spectroscopy. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, if, if you search it up, there, there is a title for that on Wikipedia and stuff, you know, and it is a term that, that it is used, but not kind of really because it doesn't describe what we're doing properly. But it's the general term right. for the specific measuring stars with spectroscopy. But he just kind of yeah. made up a word and threw it out at you to deflect from the fact that he couldn't answer the eclipses question. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Um, right, so then more space not understanding. That was about nine minutes. Gas <clears throat> and dust in space in a vacuum in zero pressure. In media movies. Oh. I've been spitting them out like ping pong balls where they go run away and they park themselves in the oh, yeah, rest sorry, of the again, please. Bit. Space is not as depicted, displayed in media movies. Yeah, I mean, space, space is, they're just, you know, giving us images of, of insanity in space. Like when they show us, um, you know, nebulas, right? They, they show us this and they tell us this is where stars are born. This is where there's gas and dust, so much of it that it's creating stars and spitting them out like ping pong balls where they go run away and they park themselves in the rest of the galaxy. This gas and dust in space in a vacuum in zero pressure, how does that work? How come this doesn't collapse in on itself? This is... <laughs> He's describing what happens to make stars while saying it doesn't yeah. happen. But also, just before we get to my response to this, what I find funniest is that they're always like, oh, you know, observable, observable, what can I see? Like, how does he not understand that this is something that we see in telescopes? Mm -hmm. You can see it in a telescope. Like, it's not like he can't whine about CGI and all this kind of stuff. Like you can see it. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. this is not, it's freely available. All the space is there and you can go, you know, obviously for something like this, you need a pretty powerful, uh, a pretty powerful device. But like, I don't know, I, I, I went to Wilson observatory and I'm not sure if that's powerful enough to see a nebula, probably not this nebula, but I'm sure no, that um, you can see a nebula yeah. in a in a telescope that is available to the public uh, somewhere um, i'm pretty well, sure so one of my friends you know. um uh, geistview uh uses uh, a celestron telescope to take some amazing mm -hmm. pictures of nebulas and galaxies i did have there you one go here but i changed um, a personal telescope uh, it's well, where here, where's the conspiracy got, there um, this is the whirlpool galaxy that he took very nice it's absolutely beautiful yeah uh, that's just stacking images over over like a, a period of time to get the brightness right, and it's, it's there. You can go and look at it. You know it, it, what, yeah. what we're saying it is like you say it's it does. Observable. It does. It's that's how stars are born. Yeah, they so, do collapse. It's yeah. so, how sorry, stars born, form. Dave, in your world, this is right. Sorry, I didn't mean that to start. Uh, uh, yeah, he. So let's play it from there. And dust in space in a vacuum in zero pressure. How does that work? How come this doesn't collapse in on itself? This is just a It does. That's painting. how stars are born. Yeah, they so, do collapse. It's yeah, so, how stars form. Dave, in your world, this is gases are collapsing upon themselves and then yeah. igniting themselves in a vacuum, in a, in a, in a vacuum. And then they, they, they burn just, no, 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 millions stop, and stop. Of it, look, look I, I know that I, he, he, he explained the process there, you know, almost, right? He described what mm -hmm. happens to create stars. That's what new stars are born by the pressure of, yeah. of you know, whilst just in a mocking tone. I mean, yeah. Well, but but uh, you know, th and this is why I had to go ahead and explain the difference between combustion and nuclear fusion, because again, this is what they all say. You know, how does how do you have a a, a fire in space where there's no oxygen? It's like, well, it's not fire. Yeah, it's it, like it's, uh, it's you not. could learn this. And I think I even told him, like, this is very easily Googleable information. You can learn it in 10 seconds. Um, like, how do stars, how do stars burn in space? Da, 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 da. Oh, OK, cool. It's not fire. It's nuclear fusion. And like, so I, I debated a flat earth called JM Truth several times um, because he calls mm -hmm. himself a real scientist um, and he wanted to teach people real physics. 
So he stood in a field, yeah. Dave, and I'm going to play you a 30 second video. He stood. In, I, I have edited it by putting a clown face and music on him, but he stood in a field and recorded himself saying this. Back now that I think about it, the sun, we're told, is a big gaseous ball burning in, in space in a vacuum. By the way, since we're on the subject of vacuum, fire, the element by which the sun exerts its energy, and I don't care if it's nuclear fission or what, it's still fire, needs what element, folks, in order to continue to burn? Oxygen. You want to just spew your script without anybody how, challenging, how, but you say... Oh, oh, that shouldn't have started. That, that's, that's what they're doing. That's how dumb they are. Yeah. Uh, you edited that clown face on his face? Yeah. That's hard. That's, I don't know how to do that. That's pretty cool. Uh, I do it with After Effects. Um, I did a video recently uh, with Daniel Pratt, and um, I, I put a monkey on his face, uh, which I think looks absolutely fantastic. Literally turned him into a monkey. And then I had to apologize High... for you know, comparing Daniel uh, Pratt to monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> High production value there. That's good stuff. Well, if you want to I've just uh, I, I especially a video was, on Simon I like Dan's how channel. he called fire an element. <laughs> That's yeah, what was my the favorite. element by which. And here's, here's another thing that blows their mind when I tell them the, the sun's like, what, 1.8% oxygen? oxygen like you know well yeah i mean that's not that's not molecular oxygen but no, it's but, it, i mean there's a lot of oxygen nuclei in there yeah. but yeah so but, i mean the point is it's not it's not a combustion reaction like no <laughs> not, not in the slightest they don't but yeah. he, he says so. there it's nuclear fusion but it still needs oh no you clearly have no idea what you as someone who served on a nuclear sub and is trained as nuclear engineer dave that hurt me mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's people who don't understand this. The first thing about what they're talking about, mocking people who study this stuff for their lives. <laughs> so that that that's the fundamental arrogance that I want people to understand. That makes flat Earth just so utterly unique in its in its arrogance. Um, yeah. It's 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 not just science denial. It's not just selective science denial. It's complete and total science denial. Yeah, the whole 100%. thing, all of it. <laughs> so, um, and then D D Dave goes on to continue to misunderstand nuclear fusion, nuclear furnace that burns for billions of years. Um, I'm sorry, that doesn't make any sense. And if you okay, want to so, that and that's his argument. It, it, he explains what it is, and then says, "I'm sorry, but that doesn't make any sense." We have a specific name for that. That's an argument from incredulity, right? Mm -hmm. That's just going. I don't understand, so it can't be real. Yeah, like, I don't know how he even thought that was something that he should be saying out loud. <laughs> it's really crazy. Yeah, uh, yeah um, thank you for Shanti. Shanti, who's um, uh, in charge of my Discord, one of my top members, has just posted in, in the chat that um, Professor Dave's book is still available on Amazon. Uh, what's the title of that book? Is This Wi-Fi Organic? A Guide to Spotting Misleading Science Online. If you want it, uh, go get it on Amazon, definitely. Um, <laughs> I love that title. Okay, uh, more stupid from, yeah. from, from Dave. Um, oh, right, yeah, he argues about Newton um, and the, the reason why is so stupid. And the stories that the controllers yeah. of this world tell you. Aerosol you know they wrote is, books, right? Well, you know they Earth, wrote books that so, we can read and then but, we base astronomy on that and do astronomy every Dave, day, Dave, right? Dave, try not to interrupt. Aristophanes figured out the, the shadow. Eratosthenes. The, Eratosthenes figured out the, the, the diameter, the, the circumference of the Earth with his sticks and shadows. Uh -huh. But nobody in that area that came out of that other mathematicians never wrote any books about him. They ignored him. They just and that, like you point out, is just a straight out lie, isn't it? Yeah. All of this crap, he's just like, they taught flat Earth in schools until the 50s. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. I, Nobody that, did. Like you're just blatantly lying. <laughs> yeah, he, what, he, he literally said like, that, didn't he? That he they, did. Yeah, he yeah. says it all the time. It's like, dude, like, you, it's so easy to find out that that's a lie. It's so easy. Any yeah, I, globe that predates, like, there's been globes from a thousand years ago. You know that 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 still exists, um, let alone yeah, the ones that one in are, uh, have been destroyed. Museum you know? that's uh, I think just over eight hundred years old. Um, and mm -hmm. depicts most yeah, of like, the continents find, that we know now. <laughs> find, me, know? find me a textbook from the 30s that says the Earth is flat. Find me one. Yeah, find I, me one. I challenged people for that. Uh, I did. Um, and 
to the Flat Earthers' credit, I was given a, um, a textbook from the 1800s uh, about teaching a Flat Earth. Did you ever hear about the city of Zion? Probably not in the context that you're implying. I, well, I know it's um, like a biblical No, no, biblical not the biblical sense. one. So there was a flat earther who in the 1800s um, believed so vigorously that the, the earth w was flat and he was very, very rich that he set up his own town in America called Zion where you had to believe in flat earth. And there was an entire town like with, with schools and everything and government and everything. And it was a flat earth town called Zion. Mm. So, uh, I mean, maybe cool. from the 1800s, but, you know, Crazy people teach yeah. crazy things, right? Yeah, the dumb people made a dumb town, and uh, <laughs> nobody cares. So, <laughs> the dumb know. people made a dumb town. <laughs> um, yeah. Right, so then he argues about Eratosthenes. Wait, we well, can not being able to pronounce it in the slightest. Just play the lie game. And, <laughs> and Dave, what, uh, what about um, the fact that that proves nothing? It works perfectly on a flat Earth. Sticks and shadows prove the Earth is flat. And it proves it's a globe. But you'd have to assume parallel rays. Listen to this. Eric right. Listen to this. I bet you've never heard this before. I'm about to blow your mind with some bullshit I made up. <laughs> it's like the confidence with which he asserts these lies. It's astounding. Yeah. Well, the thing about Eratosthenes with two data points, right, is that you actually could use that to determine the radius of a flat Earth with just two data points. And you can also use yeah. it to, to figure out flat Earth. But Eratosthenes' experiment... If the sun was like, if the sun yeah. was like where planes are, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, but, you know, that's obviously what they yeah. claim. But you know, in, in those conditions, it could work. But the problem arises as soon as you add a third data point and a fourth data point, which has been done. Um, my friend Slice Barkane did an experiment, with, I think it was with 37 people or maybe 27 people from all around the world. Right, the, the same Eratosthenes experiment, measuring the, the angle of the sun at solar noon and mapped it onto a flat earth uh, and a globe earth. Now on a flat earth, the angles gave different positions for the suns. There, there must have been multiple suns. But when you mapped it onto the mm -hmm. globe earth and you had the globe kind of roll along and get all the data points go onto it, they all pointed parallel off in the distance, which is what we expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two yeah. data points. And you can almost say Eratosthenes works with a flat earth. Just two data points. And, as and soon as you add a third, it ruins it. And how did it go with them following along with this uh, with this empirical uh, oh, they, process? They, and... they called Slice Barkin a liar. They refused because it was oh, a computer model back. he used. Um, oh, see, it tunes right. Yeah. Eratosthenes only had one data point, obviously, uh, when each time he did it. Mm. But yeah, but as soon as you add but, more. But, yeah, it, but it, much it, more importantly, to keep it with Eratosthenes, uh, the what what would be the distance of the sun from the Earth required for that to work on a flat Earth, right? This yeah. is the part that he's not that he's not talking about, right? <laughs> where where would the sun have to be? I don't know the exact number, but it'd have to be well within Earth Earth's atmosphere. And guess what? We go up there, and it ain't there. Yeah, and, you know? and well, the <laughs> tops not... of mountains have snow. You know, not they're not burning deserts. Exactly. Um, and that's the thing with so. if you do Eratosthenes on a flat Earth, you can you can triangulate the, the, where where the sun is. The same as if you tried to do mm -hmm. celestial navigation on a flat Earth, you can calculate the height of stars, except it changes mm -hmm. depending on where you take it from. You know, right? Everything works on on a globe. Everything celestial navigation. You know, all, all the physics that we understand, it all works on a globe, but nothing works on a flat Earth. Not even day and night yeah. works on a flat Earth. Um, the concept of Occam's razor is lost entirely on any flat Earth. <laughs> So. Oh, that, you shouldn't get to talk about razors. They're not allowed. They're sharp things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let's face it. They can probably dig their eye out with a spoon during breakfast. So they definitely shouldn't have razors. Isn't Dave, that an argument? Dave, stop being a dick. Listen to what I said. <laughs> <You> st <laughs> he said that so many times. Stop being a dick. And Dave, you being a dick was telling him he was wrong. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> you, you nasty, nasty man. You. I just love like like whiny flat earthers commenting, spamming all over my channel, going, "Oh, you acted like a little child." It's like, what? Wh who do you know that says, "Stop being a dick"? Little children talk that way. Twelve-year-olds talk that way. Who? Yeah. Uh, who of the two of us is acting like a child? It's him. <laughs> Give me a break. It's ridiculous. You, you you were triggering him very well, not on purpose. I mean, maybe on purpose in the oh, you knew very much you, on purpose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was on purpose, and you did it beautifully, Dave. It, it was a masterclass. Yeah, the, the purpose, <laughs> the purpose of this interaction was to watch him crumble into ashes. 
in front of his idiot followers. That's what the purpose of this was. It was never to like get him to concede any point because he never will concede any point because no. he's a liar. It was to watch him. I, I wanted the people who think he's a credible source of information see how ridiculous and weak and foolish he is. That was the only purpose of this interaction. It was never like to have a civil conversation or to like find common ground or to like, ooh, this will be an interesting exchange of ideas. No, I'm showing his followers how dumb he is. That was the purpose of this interaction. Yes. <laughs> and you did it so well. Oh, okay. Yeah, being a dick. <laughs> the the Arista Eratosthenes believed that the Earth was geocentric, that the sun orbited us, but the sun was a distant sun. How does a distant, gigantic sun orbit a minuscule, minuscule speck Earth? Yeah, and right, this confused me because he goes off on a tangent here and tries to get you to explain the geocentric model. Which, which yeah. why, why would why would that matter? Uh, it's just yeah. It's uh, spoiler alert. It's not. <laughs> yeah, neither it's, geocentrism it's or true. heliocentrism help him, uh, but. It's funny that a lot of flat earthers, when they say geocentrism, they think that geocentrism means flat earth for some reason. Yeah. But it doesn't. Ptolemy knew the earth was round, man. Yeah, 100% he knew a, the earth was round. Got um, a bone up on your, on your ancient astronomy. Uh, I, I, I debated um, a, a geocentrist, I can't remember his name now, um, Robertson Jenis, that's his name. Have you ever heard of him? I have not. Um, he calls himself a doctor. Um, but after I found out that his doctorate was all fake and, you know, basically bought from an island, uh, the debates where he had doctor on were, the, uh, I, I said, look, he's not a real doctor. Here's the evidence. They removed the name doctor and he won't speak to me anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so you mean he acknowledges the earth is a sphere, but he's, he's maintaining the Ptolemaic model? Yeah, 100%. Uh, and I, I That's talked so him strange to me. I, I, I talked to him specifically through... Uh, you know, retrograde motion and everything and how that is empirical evidence for, for the heliocentric model and, you know, the, how the laws of gravity and it can be, you know, it, how nothing works with geocentrism almost as much as nothing works with flat Earth. But he just refused it. Yeah. But, I mean, nowhere near as bad because, no. you know, geocentrism held until the 15th or 16th century. But yeah. I mean, what's interesting to me about a position like that is flat Earthers get to do this whole, oh, it's all a conspiracy, blah, 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 blah. So that's idiotic, but at least they have, like, a motive in mind. Whereas to deny heliocentrism, all that happened was Kepler, you know, Tycho Brahe gathered more precise data, and Kepler used it to 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 uh, to do all of Kepler's laws, which which corroborated, uh, which co co even further corroborated heliocentrism. So you get the elliptical orbits, all this stuff. He's just arguing with data, right? There's no conspiracy there. Like we adopted heliocentrism because the data, the the observations better fit that model. So he's basically just trying to argue that 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 the data is wrong, or or like what is he even arguing? What what are his talking points? Um. Basically, that gravity doesn't work the way we say, um, and the way that he says that gravity works is better explained by things rotating around us. Um, he says that retrograde like motion is an effect. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of electric universe in uh, electric universe in there, but he says retrograde motion Shocking. is explained by refraction, uh, which blew my mind. <laughs> um, uh, I'll send you the debate because I thought it was one of my better debates, even though it was the first time I'd ever spoken to a geocentrist. Um, he did not like me. My at God, all. <laughs> you learn something new every day. I, I would never have guessed hey, that there were. I'll tell you what. Actually, debunking Robertson Jenis and the things that he says, you know, that would be down your road, honestly, because he's got like Possibly. an institute and stuff where he tries to teach his version of science. Huh. Yeah. Where is this? I'll send you all the details. No, like, where does he live? Where is this? Oh, you, you don't mean a physical institute. No, no, well, he calls it an institute, like, but it's okay, just him with say. a website and a bunch of brainwashed people that help him. The same, it's almost, it's like Hovindesk, you know, he's got a whole team. Crazy. It's just like, uh, I'm starting to understand that, like, you know, with the, like, terrain theory of disease and all this stuff, like, all of pseudoscience, like, if you want a shortcut to being a, a con man pseudoscience pusher, all you have to do is go back in time to a theory that has been discarded several centuries ago and just use it. 
Like you, you don't have to you don't have to build anything. You don't have to develop anything. You can just go back to the seventeen hundreds or the fifteen hundreds or whatever, take a theory that is complete, that was discarded because of new data, and just just push that theory exactly as it is. Yeah. And lie and hope that people don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> like heliocentrism is like five hundred plus years old. Like Yeah, it's it's know. not it's not it's, a, a new thing that's shocking, you know? No. <clears throat> Like, yeah. but there's so many. It's the fact that there's stupid people that will just follow the lie for some reason. They want it's, they want to be special, and you know, I, I say that yeah. in a hundred years time, if there's like people on Mars, you know, they'd be living in the pressurized domes on Mars, and there'd be a bunch of people that are like, "We didn't come from Earth. That's all a lie. Look, we've got to live in a pressurized container." You know, there's always right. going to be we stupid were born people. here. Yeah. <laughs> Earth's yeah. a myth. Anti-establishment bias. Anti-establishment yeah. bias. That is the thread that runs through all of this. All of these things. Yeah. Right. More stupid. Math, math works. You've never done any math in your entire life. You hey, just hey, say hey, the hey, math stop, works stop and expect saying, people to... Stop, just stop being a condescending prick, all right? Try. You Why try don't you stop minutes. condescending to the entire human race and pretending that every scientist ever is a liar and satanic deceiver? That's much... So... I wanted to play that clip because it runs off of Durf's argument of the maths works. But how many times during your conversation did he attempt to do any maths? He did not. I mean, uh, in his defense, neither did I, but I know that the math works and he's lying. So, I mean, yeah. I mean you've demonstrated have, the maths we, works I, in videos. Like, but have you. Sure, have the, yeah. All the videos you've watched of him or of any flat earthers, have they ever done maths? No, of course never. Uh, yeah, I just didn't feel like doing it live, but yes, I've done it on debunks. I've done the like yeah. uh, comparing acceleration due to gravity to centripetal or centrifugal acceleration. It's a factor of two hundred different. Yeah, on a video you can do the math because I can, I, I I can animate them. I can show the numbers. I can do you know yeah. diagram. I didn't feel like doing it live, but um, obviously, yeah, no. But but that's a yeah. common thing. <laughs> them just claiming it works and never showing that it works. It's exactly the same with their mm. whole celestial navigation thing at the moment. Oh, it only works on a flat Earth. But how many times do you think a flat earther has shown how celestial navigation works on a flat earth? Not once, ever. You know? No. <laughs> and especially not have, uh, nor especially have they tried to physically navigate anywhere using I'd it. love to see them try because they'd never come back. Yeah. <laughs> flat earthers go around the pizza world using only flat earth uh, concepts. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be great. Like, may, maybe NASA mm. should send flat earthers to space and, you know... Not bring them back, just send them to space. Yeah. <laughs> In a <laughs> okay. perfect world where we had cheap space travel. Um, right, so he's getting confused about gravity again. It's to their planets, and it negates mm -hmm. the sun. That's what you believe. What do you mean negates the sun? Never is a liar in sun. What is the sun? It's a star. It's to their planets, and it okay. negates uh, mm -hmm. the sun. Too far, too that's a, it's a nuclear furnace that, that's working perfectly, and it's bending space-time where it could hold on to all of the planets that go all the way out to Pluto. Is that, is that your belief? Well, Pluto's uh, now uh, a trans-Neptunian okay. right. object. So, so we'll go but Neptune. Yes, we'll go all, yes. All right. And then, and then the, the sun's gravity ignores all of the moons because the moons are attracted to their planets, and it negates mm -hmm. the sun. That's what you believe. What do you mean negates the sun? Yeah, negates so, the sun. moons, so what you're saying... So yeah, um, he thinks that moons ignore the sun's gravity. Mm -hmm. And we know that's not true. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, think he's, I think what he's implying is that Titan should be ripped away from, yeah. from Saturn and go flying towards the sun. Now, when I phrased it that way, he denied it because he knew that he shouldn't be making any specific claims that could be debunked easily with basic math. But he just kind of pulls, he just throws out a basic, you know, a, a vague, like, that doesn't make sense. Um, but then when pressed to, like, clarify what he's talking about, of course he can't. Of course he no. cannot say anything concrete. He's just like, huh, or planets and moons, I don't get it. I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know? Now, the, so. I, I've had this argument with flat earthers before, and the way that I explain it to them is that, well, we know that the moon's being affected by the sun's gravity because it's not flinging off into space, like mm -hmm. the earth. You know, both the earth and the moon are orbiting the sun, and they wouldn't be orbiting the sun if they weren't affected by the sun's gravitational influence. That, that, that's right. the, the reason why, why, yeah, exactly. The Earth-Moon system 
the entire is thing orbiting. is a, it, it, you know, that's that gravity well is orbiting the sun and that gravity well within it contains the gravity well of the of the of the earth which is slightly larger than the gravity well of the moon which causes the moon to then orbit that at the same time but that entire system is orbiting the sun which means that the moon and every moon in the solar system that is also orbiting the sun is being affected by the sun's gravity Yep. I mean, honestly, it's it's not it's it's not really any different from asking why the Earth doesn't go plummeting towards the sun. It's yeah. just not how orbital mechanics it, works. Exactly. I mean, I mean you'd have to into stop the Earth in space, right, for that to happen. Yeah. Which, which honestly is like, you can ask that question. Like, it's not insane to ask why doesn't the Earth go plummeting towards the sun? Yeah. And that's just how orbital mechanics works. It, 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 is, it is on an elliptical orbit. It is on a path. Now, if you had a rogue object that was not formed as part of the system where you have angular momentum that has to be retained, if you have just, like, an object that's plummeting directly towards the sun on, like, some rogue trajectory from outside of the system, yeah, um, yeah it'll go and hit the sun, <laughs> you know, for yeah. sure. But um, we have stable orbits. The planets have stable orbits, and that's that's where they remain yeah so, anybody would have to just be you know if something appeared in you know, in space a certain distance from the sun it would fall towards the sun right but if it appeared yeah if in it space, magically if it tangential... just appeared with, with yeah. no momentum yeah, yeah it would plummet towards but the sun. if it's yeah. got a tangential velocity of any amount if that tangential velocity is enough for it to miss the sun then it's going to go into a stable orbit of some kind at least for right. a while and it's not it's our fault the that with they don't understand in, uh, orbital mechanics and frankly, we don't have enough yeah. crayons to explain it to them. Mm -hmm. um, right. Now, this is where some real stupid comes out. 2433. <clears throat> Such as an object like the Southern Cross. All right. Can you go back to the slides? I think that's the, the last one. Let no, me go through the just slides. Just Let check me go if it's the next one. Yeah. So uh, you, you've just given a beautiful explanation of, of you know, why seeing the stars shows that the earth earth is spherical and his response silver bullet yeah his yeah. response Ch check if it's the last one and if, if you can go back to the first one that would be great <clears throat> this was killing so me they in just, your world we have people standing upside there. down and you're assuming... there we go that's his response your you, it was like almost uh, a four minute maybe three and a half minutes of you giving a really concise explanation of star rotations, of standing in certain points and being able to see things. And his response is, so in your world, people are standing upside down. Mm -hmm. that, I yeah, mean, and then the magnetic declination thing. Oh, God, we're going to get to magnetic declination. Yeah. Don't worry, don't, oh, my God. Um, but that, that's, that's one thing that he does is he can't argue with the things that you've just said. So he will try and mock you. You think people are standing upside down? Is that what you think in your model? You know, trying to make you look silly instead of actually responding yeah. to the devastating you know, demonstration that you've just given, uh, which was There's from no, is, this, was this your One of my response, favorites. Too? This is one of my favorite proofs. It's just so yeah. obvious. It's so easy to understand. A child yeah. can understand this. And, and what it's are the just... two locations that you use? Uh, well, no, this was just, uh, oh, oh, this that, is just the start, the start uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, how are, a, 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 on the pizza land, everybody's looking south is a completely different direction to everybody. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, whereas in the real world, everybody looks south towards the same direction, which is the yeah. South Pole. And that's why we can see the same object. <laughs> so very um, simple, very easy. And his arguments to that is, let's get to that. Well, first of all, he calls you a dick again at 27 minutes. We don't need to hear that, but that's just because you destroyed his world in front of his very eyes. Uh, and then this Explain is that. Right. So you just explained again about the fact that, you know, if two people are at different points at South, you know, along the lines of latitude, yeah. will be looking in different points. And you've asked him to explain that. I had to read <laughs> Yeah, I had to reiterate it again. I had, uh, yeah. just like, the what? I was and, like, I'll explain it again in one sentence. His response is if, when uh, the only mm -hmm. time that can happen is in Johannesburg and Santiago. And if you add magnetic declination in there, they're both looking in the same direction. Magnet. When in doubt, say the word magnet. Yeah. <laughs> so he thinks magnetic declination can physically change the position of stars based on where you're looking. 
Because even though those stars are in different places on a flat Earth, magnetic declination makes it for some reason look like the stars would look like if you were on a sphere. This was probably his most desperate moment in the entire exchange. Yeah. Where he just had absolutely nothing to say. <laughs> so I, I, I genuinely think he doesn't understand in the slightest what magnetic declination is. Magnetic declination is, is, is simply the no, difference between um, where your compass will point and what we class as true north, right? That, that's right. it. It's the, you know, and because the poles, the, 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 the magnetic poles are not aligned with the geographic poles. Yeah, exactly. And in fact, the magnetic poles move. Like, this yeah. is another funny thing about, like, they want the North Pole, like, they want magnets to point towards the center of the pizza land. That's geographic North Pole. That's not the magnetic North Pole. And the magnetic po North Pole moves. So, I'm sorry, like, a little magic, you know, they think they at Santa's workshop they have, like, a big... Uh, pole or something and all the magnets are pointing towards that well no <laughs> it's moving around yeah so uh it's, it's it is desperation oh magnetic declination makes the stars appear in 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 the way they should but it's still flat for some reason it's it's the dumbest thing I've ever i heard. <laughs> i wish that you'd asked him to explain magnetic declination because i think that would have been i should comedy. have said yeah <laughs> yeah i should say define magnetic declination i mean you know it, it there's so many retrospects there's so many like little i could have this here and there but um in the end it's just like you know <laughs> it was just carnage it was just mayhem the whole time so but, um yeah you you destroy him on magnetic declination um pretty easily and this is how he responds do they or are you just randomly grasping at words to try to make sense of something that is absolutely unexplainable for you David, it's not true, and uh, the optics in the sky, again, do not prove the shape of the Earth. You say that well, they I do. I just did prove they, it with they, that, they, so I don't know what to tell you. Let's move on. That's his response. Let's move on. You've destroyed him yep. on looking at the stars and magnetic declination. You've absolutely ruined him. He's not responded to any of your claims, so let's move on. Not a one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's my hope that, I mean, the, the only way, like, the only hope is to get his followers to see him in that exasperated of a state. That's why I have to press on him so much. That's why I have to hold him under my shoe yeah. like this. And so I'm sorry, this, is, this type of aggression is warranted and necessary to get him to that kind of a state so that his followers can see how pathetic he is. That's why we're doing it this way. That's why it can never be a civilized conversation with this kind of person. No. This was the kind of moment I wanted them to see. He has nothing to say and is desperately trying to change the topic. That's it. <laughs> yeah, so. to, to anything apart from the sky, which is one of the most devastating things to the flat earth. Um, yeah, absolutely. that's why they say it. Why do we look at the sky to figure out the shape of the Earth? Because it works really well, and it's how we did it 2,000 years ago. Yeah, and ha you know, it's how celestial navigation is, you know, it's the foundation of celestial navigation, basically, you know? Mm -hmm. um, right, now, so one thing he says here is some of, one of my personal pet peeves. Be accurate. And then you think that we're spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, and we don't feel it, and we're... That sentence spinning at a thousand miles an hour dave that pierces my very soul yeah you, you, it's once a day bud i have tried to explain so many times that you can't measure your rotation in miles per hour you know that's yeah. a tangential <laughs> speed you know you can't look yeah. at a ball and go that ball's spinning in so miles an hour it, it, it literally does it's not something that makes sense you know it's a not a engine, unit that is applicable yeah no you and can do RPMs, you can yeah, do, you, you, you need a number seconds, of rotations you know? for some unit of time. That's yeah. how you do. But they get stuck on this thousand miles an hour because a thousand to them is a big number. It's a big number. Mm -hmm. it's scary. So we, we have to talk about that big scary number that we can't feel without, mean, without mm -hmm. realizing that, you know, we know the rotational velocity. So that thousand miles an hour means very, very little. Um, which is basically what the video I've just reached with Simon Dan is all about. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so then he goes on and starts changing. About Earth's orbit. You know, we're we're changing directions. How is that possible? How about when yeah. the Earth it comes around <laughs> in uh, comes around towards the sun in the winter in our northern winter? Um, it it's speeding up and taking its sharpest turn, and then we don't feel any of those forces. Its sharpest turn. So he's Such talking about term. the elliptical orbit of, of, the, of, of the Earth around the Sun, right? He's talking about the mm -hmm. fact that between, you know, over, over a, 
a period of six months, the the acceleration increases by about three percent. You know, mm -hmm. and he expects that three percent increase over six months to be something that we should perceive somehow. Right. Even if it was on a dime, we might yeah. not feel it. But it's uh, yeah. That's that's the point. That's why this. Yeah, I think this yeah. is one of my favorite. Yeah, moments he's, in the entire exchange that what he's rendered do, utterly speechless. What he's trying to do is he's trying to destroy the constant movement argument by saying that it's not a constant movement. There's that acceleration due yeah. to the elliptical orbit, but it's you know you can do the calculations of what that acceleration is, and it's yeah, so what's small. The magnitude? Yeah, it's so so small. Um, yeah. So, but 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 so they're allergic to math. So I can't oh, yeah. do math. I have to I have to use analogies. I have to do, do say things that that even they can understand. So that's why I said this, which I assume you're going to play now. Yes, I'm just trying to think it. of something to say hey, that Dave, will make stop, sense. Stop being a dick. <clears throat> there it is again. Stop being a dick, Dave. Just just stop it. Oh, oh okay. We missed it. Yeah, I did the the, the car analogy, right? It, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you did do yeah, a 360. Um, I'll paraphrase it. Do a do a 360 in a year, right? Yeah. Or if you want to break it down, 360 degrees, 365 days. It's about a degree a day. So have your car veer by one degree over 24 hours. And what is the acceleration that. you're going to feel? It's not like it's not like going Err! like yeah. If you like do a sharp turn in your car, you feel that. That's not what yeah. the Earth is doing. <laughs> no, <laughs> not it's not. It's not like you're going time. around a roundabout at 20 miles an hour. You know. It, it, yeah. it's, it's not like you, you're doing some handbrake turns and being flung against the side of a car. Yeah. It's if the Earth the... magically did a hairpin turn, yeah, there, that'd be weird. We'd all f probably yeah. feel that, and something crazy would happen on Earth. It would be insane. It would be devastating. But that's yeah. not. <laughs> that's not how. That's not how celestial mechanics works. It's not no. how orbital mechanics works. So, uh, okay. So now he goes on to misunderstanding planes. Does it take a year? A year, right? So uh, why don't you okay. go ahead and get? <laughs> if, imagine you're in, and it's curving. That's acceleration. Okay. So Ooh, big just words. This, just this acceleration is a big word. Go, you know, go back well, to when it is for you because you're not using it properly. So, acceleration is rate of change in velocity. So you're using well, when it you, like when it's velocity, you change so off you of your vector. Means. When you change off of your vector, that force is equal to acceleration. Okay. Yeah, but I just and, told and, you, and you right? It, it takes it, a year to go around the sun. What? No. How? How much are you feeling? Do you want to calculate it? Should we calculate Dave, I'm it together? Talking about the spin of the Earth. The okay. spin of the Earth. The spin of the Earth. Right? You're dropping. The spin of the Earth is constant. Two miles a minute. You do not minute. feel. You're you're falling like if you take a point in space and you go for an hour, you're falling at the same rate as a, a skydiver free falling. Okay. What? Is he talking about the fact that you would be moving with a tangential speed, the same speed as a skydiver would be falling towards the ground? Like, I think he's talking about the rate at which curvature is produced due to the speed of the rotation of the Earth. Like, I, there were so many moments in here where I just, like, could barely have a grasp of what he even thought yeah. he was trying to say. I, I mean, it's like, I, I don't know. Times. Like, does he not understand that you don't feel free fall also? Like, that there is, that, like, when, like, skydivers aren't like, I feel like I'm falling. Like, you just feel like you're floating when you skydive. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you like, have to feel like the air fall, you in your face and stuff. But, you know, you feel the air, you're, which you're you don't, under... well, the rotation of the earth, because the air is moving yeah. as the earth rotates. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. like Einstein said, someone in free fall would experience the same thing as an acceleration or, or as someone not you know as someone in free fall would experience the same thing as someone not moving because in their reference frame it's the same thing exactly you know? the laws so, of physics are the same for every inertial reference frame yeah yeah so, but so he he thinks that you should feel the fact that the earth is spinning and as it's spinning it's curving away from you I guess I don't. Your guess what? is as good as mine as to what the hell you. I'm gonna have to break that right down. Um, uh, I, I want to do an edited version of this for, for, for your channel, and I'm, I'm gonna have to break down that somehow. I have no idea what he's mm -hmm. talking about there. <laughs> yeah. uh, right now, oh, this is one of the best bits of the discussion. Uh, your mainstream science says that because of the spin of the Earth because of the centrifugal force, that the water bulges at the equator 14 miles high. 
I couldn't stop laughing when he said that. He 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 thinks there's like um like you would sail along the ocean and there'd be a physical bulge of water going up. Yeah, a fourteen mile high tidal wave is what yeah. he was saying that science claims. Yeah, but of, of why would science doesn't... claim that? It's not there. Like, what is he talking about? Like, but but in the end, I understood what he was talking about. He was talking about the equatorial bulge at the yeah. equator of the Earth. Isn't it? So, is it a forty-three but... mile difference between the equatorial and the polar diameters? Uh, it it's very very small. Something. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like... But but it, it matched that number. It matched that number such that I knew that that's what he was talking about. That's the yeah. like the difference in the radius from the center of the Earth to the North Pole versus any point yeah. on the equator. But that's the whole Earth. Yeah, not just the like, water. Like, does he not understand? Like the wa- like the oceans, as deep as they are to to us, our tiny little bodies, are an are a tiny fraction of one percent of the radius of the Earth. They're insignificant compared to yeah. the radius of the Earth. So the equatorial bulges of the whole Earth. It's not like the it's not the Earth is a perfect sphere, and then the bulge is the ocean. <laughs> like it's just yeah. it's just his inability to grasp the most basic concepts is astounding and of course we've got ways of proving that as well by the mere fact that you weigh more at the poles than you do at the equator because number one you're technically closer to the center so that r squared for universal law of gravitation means that you're you know feeling more and then you are having less centrifugal force because you don't have that tangential speed so we know that there is a, a difference because we physically weigh more where we're closer because there's not that bigger diameter. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or more precisely like a, you know, a, a reference mass, not yeah. like a person, but yeah. Yeah. Like yeah it's very a hard kilogram to, reference yeah. mass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's something subtle enough for them to just go, whoever did that measurement is a liar. I don't know. Whatever. But um, yeah, this thing with the with the and then he just like oh Neil Neil said it, Neil no, said it. Which first of all, no, he did not. And second <laughs> of all, he's not the president of science, so I don't know what like yeah. they love to do that. Just like Neil is what you guys think is the number one science. No, he's just a science communicator. Yeah, he's, he's a guy a who decided I'm going to stop doing science and I'm going to start explaining science. Yeah. Uh, Flat Earth is free so to often- do that that we've actually got a, a name for it. Actually, it was a name that was coined by an ex-Flat Earther called Seek Truth, Speak Truth, who's in the chat at the moment. Hey, dude. He's coined that as the Neil deGrasse Tyson fallacy because Flat Earthers oh, okay. all the time bring out, well, Neil deGrasse Tyson says, like the, the famous one mm. of Neil deGrasse Tyson said that Earth moved under a football when he did the tweet that um, the winning kick at a football match would have been helped by a one-eighth of an inch deflection to the right due to the rotation of the Earth. And, of course, he's talking mm-hmm. about Coriolis force over a very short distance. He's like, I yeah. did the math, and yeah. there would have been at that speed a tiny, tiny deflection. And Flat Earthers took and I'm that sure as, he's probably right. Yeah, and Flat Earthers took that as Neil deGrasse Tyson saying that the Earth spins underneath things. Oh, well, when, why doesn't the Earth spin underneath a helicopter? And that started the whole thing, you know? Oh, God. <laughs> well, yeah. then don't get me started on the pear-shaped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or, or him going, that stuff is flat. Flat Earthers love that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so the Neil deGrasse Tyson fallacy, that, that's one to remember. Good one, yeah. Um, and then he talks about boats going over the horizon without understanding really what a horizon is. Uh, or is that 38th force 40? God, it's a really big go over the horizon. We can see boats huh? go over the horizon. We can see boats go over the horizon, but we can't see the curve, right? Dave, according to... That- that line, we, they use that often. We can see boats go over the horizon, but we can't see the curve of the Earth. And to them, that's debunking that the Earth's got a curve. In fact, and, it's proving that it has a curve because yeah. the horizon is the curve. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, like I say, the horizon is literally an effect of the curve of the Earth. You wouldn't have that horizon mm. if there wasn't a curve. Yeah, the horizon isn't yeah. a, the curve, but the horizon's there because there is a curve. You know? It's a geometrical uh, limitation to how far we can see due to the geometry of the Earth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, not, it's, not an they, optic, it's not an optical effect. It's not an atmospheric no. effect. You know? yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously, atmospheric effects can move the position, the apparent position of the horizon due to refraction. And have an impact on how far away the horizon is. Yeah, the yeah. horizon's always going to be that, that distance just yeah. because it doesn't look like that all the time. It doesn't change the physical geometry of the planet. So, mm. uh, yeah, that's, that one's always fun. Um, and he, he follows that with the, the classic, we see too far, which is just them not understanding reflect, refraction. Yep. And he goes on about J. Tolan Media 
And I don't know if you ever looked at any of J. Tolan Media stuff, but basically he takes infrared pictures from planes and then lies about where they've been taken from. That's yeah, it. That, it's that's like, uh, this is this far, this is this place. No, it's not. Yeah. He's a yeah. liar. It, I yeah, just love that they, it's like, look, all of, uh, every every photo of the Earth from space, every live, you know, for SpaceX launch, 24-7 live feed from ISS, all of that's fake. All of that's fake. Uh, but this one guy who posts videos on the internet, those have to be true. Let, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. man. Like, if you're going to reject all of this stuff, then you shouldn't even bother bringing that up because we're not entering that as evidence for anything. I'm yeah, sorry. This, this so. one person has the ability to do something that no one else has ever done. No, it, it, no it's can't. amazing. Well yep. done. Um, right. Uh, now he gets very confused about tangents. Only one point that would be touching the earth and the rest would just rise up into space. But all horizontal lines l line up with the horizontal horizon. <coughs> okay, they're all so he's saying that if the earth is curved, then things that are perfectly horizontal will diverge away from the earth. And then saying that that, yeah, I mean that doesn't happen. But that does happen. If, if you right? have like a magic, a magic thousand mile long imaginary mm -hmm. line. Yes, it would only connect with the Earth at one point. I mean, if we're in a perfect system, what is that? Yeah. Who cares? Like, <laughs> however, we, we do know. have LIGO, right? And the the construction for LIGO, uh, the two kilometer arms, they had to take into account the curvature of the Earth because it was built over such a level mm. surface that from the start where to the end of the uh, the arms, there was almost like a ten meter deviation that they had. They spent mm -hmm. years calibrating it with fine tuning, uh, concrete pouring. Uh, because they had to take into account the fact that something that is perfectly horizontal does actually diverge away from the surface of the Earth the further you get away. Mm -hmm. You know, and the yeah. further you well, get away, the more you would see it. That's the mainstream narrative. We're not going to trust anybody at LIGO. Oh, yeah. Yeah, obviously, LIGO is just a, a satanic um, you know, fraud that we shouldn't really They're talk They're Freemasons. About, right? Yeah, obviously, 33 Club, everything. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do, do, do. Right. Um Here's one of my favorite lies of Flat Earth. Uh, 4151. It's a line and that's a line. And if we're just looking at less than a mile, yeah, it looks really straight. But it's not because the it, Earth is a sphere. Has, so has any, you're has, not comprehending scale. That's Has the problem. anybody measured curvature in large body of water at rest? A you know, large <clears throat> body of water needs a container to hold it in place. And has anyone measured any curvature on resting water? And don't tell, okay. tell me the, the, your, your drop and your wave. Which... So he, he's asking for if anyone has measured um, curvature o o over water, uh, over large bodies of water. And, you know, yeah, that's done all the time, right? Um, it's and... no different in water and land. Like, what's the difference? So um, they like water it. because they say that water is level, or <laughs> water finds its level. So they like they like to use water, but of course, water is one of the hardest things to do because you know tides are a thing, refractions a thing. It's not a great tool to use, but we can prove that's that the funniest part. And and he totally didn't respond to what I said about how on his magic pizza land, he, all, water also is not flat and level because yeah. he's got little bulges that are tides floating around. So uh, he didn't. I, I should have pressed him a little more on that because. Uh, he didn't he didn't bite on that <laughs> so um but they're constantly asking for measurements of um of water curving of w bodies of water at rest curving well have they have asked for that so many times and so many times i've shown on this website from jesse kwasalski who's a surveyor and he went out and he used his own surveying instruments um and the one at the bottom here over a lake it was 1.2 miles do 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 I think it's the next one. Yeah, here we go. Over a lake, uh, 1.2 miles. Uh, picture taken in the morning through the telescope. Uh, set horizontal, 614 six, feet off, uh, off the ground. Um, 1.38 miles. So he's looking over 1.38 miles of water. And he's using theodolites to sight each other. And using surveying methods, he calculated that there was a drop, a curve, over this body of water of 1.38 miles. And he's got all the maths and everything. All, all his data is collected here. Uh, and he goes for it quite extensively and shows that there is actually a curve that matches what we say the curve of the Earth has. And he does it in several different positions. You know, here's all the data that he took that shows it all. And I've, I've shown this to them several times because this is exactly what they ask. This is someone measuring the surface of water 
over a large body of water to say that it has curve. Here it is. It's done. And do you know what they say? He's a liar. It's they just ignore yeah. it. It's yeah. in your it's video. Almost, they got ten million views. Um, drop and wave. I don't even know. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> it's it, it's futile to to show them that kind of a demonstration because they will just deny it outright. That's how I find more of a logical approach. Yeah. With like you know in the southern hemisphere, how do you look in different directions and see the same thing? That that's a it's like. That's just undeniable. You can't call, you can't say liar to something that is a naked eye observation anybody can do or a basic logical experiment. But yeah, I mean, of course, yeah, of course they're going to just say that's a lie. But um, yeah. they try to do the same thing and they go, oh, look at this picture. This shows there is no curvature and, and they're lying. So, I mean, that's why I don't even engage in that line there because it's going to be a stalemate. It's, uh, oh, you're, uh, they say you're lying and I say they're lying and, uh, you know, just why even bring it up? But um, I mean, obviously you're right, and obviously there's curvature over the water. I mean, this is the funniest part to me that I don't get. Like, <clears throat> like the uh, water, like oceans are not solid, right? It's not like a big ice cube. It's a bunch of water molecules all being pulled towards the center of the Earth. Yeah. That's it. End of story. Like that sentence alone should be enough for someone to grasp the concept of oceans conforming to the curvature of the Earth. It's a liquid. The molecules are moving around, and they're all pulled towards the center of the Earth. So the ocean will conform to the curvature of the Earth. Yeah. That's it. Like, there's nothing more needs to be explained than that, <laughs> you know? And that, that's actually so. the definition of, of level as well. When you're talking about surveying, they, they say true level right. is the curvature of water. You know, it's the curvature of Earth. That's what, that's what true level is. Level conforms to the curvature of the liquid parts of Earth's surface, you know? Yeah. Uh, or, or on a local scale, perpendicular to the vector that points from your position to the center of the Earth. That's what level would be, which, of course, changes depending on the position you, that you're in. <laughs> so. yeah. I just want to say we've got nearly 800 people watching. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming uh, to watch this redestruction of, of Dave. Uh, I'm, I'm of Flat Earth Dave. I'm really enjoying it. Thank you, everyone, for turning out. Uh, it's amazing to see you all here. Thanks. Um, we're about three quarters of the way through the stupid. So let, let's crack on, um, because the next one is a doozy. Uh, obviously, it goes on his whole water um, needs a container argument, whilst ignoring what you said about tides, um, but then says this about tides, which made me spit my coffee yes. out. But uh, right, you, tides exist, right? Yeah, they do, but they don't correlate uh. to the sun and the moon. They're, they're, it's, there's, there's stop, no stop, 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 stop. Uh, tides don't correlate to the sun and the moon. Yeah. They visibly and demonstrably do correlate with the sun and the moon. But, but that was him. Try this, this is one of the, you know, about half a dozen times I emphatically did not allow him to gish gallop and was no. just like, shut up. I'm going to finish the point, you know. So, uh, so what, what would you say is the best way that we can correlate the, the sun and the moon with tides? By looking at where the sun and the moon are and recording where the tide when the tides happen. <laughs> well, like like you said, also there is the fact that uh, the highest tide is when solar uh, and lunar tides align, right? That, right, that right. that's when you get. And this the is one of his fallacious talking points: to just take a fact and pretend it's wrong. Yeah. And go, you know, if this was true, it should be like this, which it is, but it's not. Like, well, it is. <laughs> you uh, can PhD Google Tony it. in I the chat. I encourage anyone says... watching to Google it right now. PhD Tony in the chat uh, says we use variations in sea surface height to detect variations in bathymat uh, bathymetry. The sea surface over underwater mountains is higher. Um, the, yeah, the, the fact that, that he's right, the surface changes all of the time of, of, of the sea. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, but know, the point I was trying to get at here was more not about analyzing what the tides are, but more just that tides disprove like tides disallow level flat water on the flat earth as well. Uh, yeah. So he, this, the, that talking point should never be uttered by any flat earther because it destroys the flat earth. Yeah. You have tides, which are little mounds of water floating, hovering around. Explain that it's not flat for you either guy, you know, <laughs> but of course he did not, uh, no, he did not want to talk about this. So no, no of course he didn't. Um, and he just wanted to ignore the fact that, the sun and the moon are the re mainly the moon, but you know they're the reason for the tides. But he just says no, it's not be because reasons, uh, and and one yeah. then wants to move on. Um, uh, Forty three. What's he say here? Uh, so he's still not understanding tides at this point. I just wanted to play this clip. 
out of the earth, the tide should be bigger, but there's not. There's bigger tides when they're no, opposing. No, it is. No, they're not. No, no, it is. You're absolutely wrong. Yeah, so he's saying that, you know, solar and lunar tides aren't a thing, basically. So just completely ignoring yeah. tides. Now, obviously, you know, there's variations around the world with tides because of, of currents and, and things like that, you know, and temperature variations and the, the shapes of the landmass. You know, it, there is variations of how it looks, but it correlates to where the moon and the sun are because that's what's dragging, you know, physically making the tides happen. Um, but he gets out this map behind him, right? Because that map shows certain tides around the world at certain times. Um, and because there's certain areas where it appears higher than it should based on where the moon is, he claims that, well, they don't completely correlate with the sun and the moon. But of course, that that can be explained by variations in the movement of water and the position of land masses. But the reason it happens and you can physically model it out is because of the moon and the sun given a gravitational influence. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, I mean, you're even giving him too much credit. He doesn't use that image to explain anything. He's literally no. just has an image behind him to go yeah. like, see, I have a science thing. Like, that's, <laughs> he doesn't use it to explain anything. Never mind the fact that he has zero ability to explain what causes the tides. Right? What What is it? Is it the little moon going, like, like what causes the tides? There's well, zero according to Eric Dubé, it's the heaving bosom, the, the, the rising and lowering of the heaving, heaving bosom of Earth. Ooh. Oh, my. I'm getting right, a little, I know. <laughs> well, a little turned on here. Yeah, I know. I didn't let's, know the Earth go. was so sexy. <laughs> oh. The cold of so the... Uh, that's not a thing. Uh, these are places where people live. We don't say Antarctica is uh, not real. We don't say that at all. You say no, that. you say the South Pole isn't real. We don't. We, even we, though there's people who go there and work there. And... People work at the South Pole. Yeah. Yeah, prove it. Okay. <laughs> he wants you to prove that people work at the South Pole. You know what? One of my subscribers works at the South Pole. I haven't spoken to him in a while. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are still watching my channel, if you're still at the South Pole, um, please contact me. Um, but one one of my one of the proofs that I like to use uh, is the um, Foucault's pendulum experiment done at the South Pole. You know, mm -hmm. people go there. They do, th and like you said to him, it's not special military people. Civilians can get a job and go to the South Pole and work there. You might need yeah. slightly more, you know, brain power for a job like that than than Dave's able to to muster up. But yeah, you don't even have to work there. People have people have traversed Antarctica. Yeah, of course they have, yeah. Uh, um, On foot. Yeah. One guy did it alone. <laughs> Last year, a team of three disabled girls did it. You know? Yeah. Like, it's, Trust it. it. One end to the other. Yeah, and they just tell no, us... Constantly. No no magic no. lands on the other side with special resources. <laughs> just came right up on the other side of the globe. Yeah, the constant flat of argument is no one's ever crossed Antarctica. Oh, apart from these hundreds of people, of course. <laughs> They're all lying. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Tons of people do. <laughs> um, so... His next lie, because at this point he is just lying. There's no video yeah, of do. the. No, no, you don't. There's no video of the 24 hour sun. There's three or four fake videos, yes. clearly fake, <laughs> taken apart. I'm talking, right? I didn't interrupt <coughs> you. And, uh, and there's no 24 hour sun. The sun antarchs away from you, it comes towards you, and it goes away. Okay. Unlike the Arctic, where it's circling around him. So he's, he's just straight up lying here. There's loads of videos of the 24 hour sun of time lapses. The, yep. There's so many, um, and I'll put a nice clip together from when I do the video. Um, Where's I'll... the proof? Here's the proof. It's fake, with no justification. Just uh, anything that disproves me is fake. Uh, MC Tune just uh, sent me a 24-hour time lapse of. Um... Let me put that up so people can see. Uh, this is how easy it is to find. You go. So here is a twenty-four hour, a five-day, twenty-four hours a day, five-day time lapse with no cuts. Dude, bro, that is so obviously photoshopped. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. It's completely and utterly fake, right? You know, they they yeah, constantly yeah. claim that, that that things are fake, that we don't have them, and we show it to them, and they just deny and say, "Oh, can we move on?" Thanks for that, Tuna. I appreciate that. Um, that's all, always helpful. Yeah, I mean so, yeah, at this point, you he's just moved to straight-up lying, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, did you expect anything else? 
No, I knew. I mean, this. I, I was prepared for this one. I mean, I, I've I've been around the block here now with these people, and I know who they are, and I know what they say, and I I know how they are, and uh, yeah, I knew exactly what was going to happen, and I knew what I was going to do about it, and that's what I did. Yeah. Um, and then, so what's the next lie he says? Because there's a, another one straight after uh, forty-seven forty. I do apologize for making you relive this stupid, Dave. <laughs> Cartoon do you like it's the best fine. showing I'm... Antarctica? What do you mean, which cartoon? Which cartoon? There's no f pictures of Antarctica from space. And do you see what he's doing right now? There's no pictures of Antarctica from space. What's behind him? A bunch of pictures of Antarctica from space. <laughs> but he says they're all fake. With no justification for that. He's saying. Yeah, and he's lying maybe there's a fake one in there. there for all I know. Maybe they made one and put one in there, and uh, <laughs> just like ah, I got gotcha. you. It's like, dude, if I make a CGI image of your face, do you cease to exist? Exactly. This is a really stupid argument. Yeah, we <laughs> make we make like like images, computer generated images of stuff in space because it looks cool. It doesn't mean it's not real. <laughs> it's just, it's just, yeah, we make things that look cool. I don't know. What do you want? Yeah, what, what's it's wrong fine. with, you know, yes, NASA has artists for, for concept images and stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. They want to put, yeah. make stuff nobody, look nice, you know? No, nobody wants to see the what we see in a telescope for, like, an exoplanet. It's boring. Yeah. The data is boring to the layperson. It's, yeah. it, it's fascinating if you're interested in, in, in astronomy, but they want to see, like, we get all the data, and we go, this is probably what that planet looks like. And then somebody makes a really cool-looking image of what the planet probably looks like, to the best of our knowledge. Is it perfect? Probably not. But it's what the data that we have, and it looks awesome, so that people can click on it and go, look how awesome this looks. It's just, it's common sense. I don't know what yeah. to say about it. Com well, the, but anyway, yeah, The problem Antarctica, is them having yeah. common sense. It's, it, that's the issue. So before the debate of him, um, uh, I told you that he had the app and everything. Did you have a look at his app? Because I know you've got pay for it, which is horrible. But did you get a chance to No, I didn't. No, I didn't like download or anything. I mean, besides, he shows it on his dumb videos. Yeah. And it's like, it's just, it's a cartoon he made. It doesn't yeah. actually show anything. <laughs> like, no, no. Yeah. And the, this clip here, he bas he admits that his map doesn't accurately show day and night. Can't no, it show doesn't. It. Well, yeah. I can't show it because the farther, the, if on the latitude line that you're on, um, it's different where you are. So I have to kind of blend them together. It's just a tool to show. The amount of. So. He, he's straight up admitting that his flat earth map and time indicator, because it says on the app, it, it's a flat earth clock. Yeah. It shows you the time. But he's straight up admitting that it doesn't show you accurate positions of day and night and where the sun and moon are. No. Yeah. He's just <laughs> flat it, out it, admitting it, it does not show the yeah. representation of day and night as it truly is on the earth. So. And, and he, how can people not see he's a fraud? This, this is a con man. This is what a con man looks like. Mm -hmm. And exposing him is, is a lot of fun. Um, right. How much is the app? Is it a couple bucks? Or, and yeah, there's a it, subscription in it too, right? That you can subscribe for some of the things like Friend Finder. Oh, this is brilliant, Dave, right? Um, it's got a feature on it called Friend Finder where um, right. flat, flat earthers can all put, the, you know, it, it uses your phone's data to show you if there's flat earthers nearby, right? Yeah. Um, except it didn't ask for And how does it know where they are? Massive security problems, right? And But here's the killer, mm -hmm. right? His app at one point showed three people in Antarctica. Oh. Uh -huh. So somebody in Antarctica was like, look at this moron. Let's yeah. download this just to see yeah. how stupid it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. It is brilliant. And, and, and yeah, and again, is using uh, GPS satellites to... Yeah, for that exactly. Orbit, the spherical Earth to... But <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is that, uh, you know, I, I think that there are definitely the people who fall for it aren't as much to blame. But all of these main guys with the channels and everything and Dubai and all these people, I mean, it's like, look, what what do you want? Like, this is, they're making money off of this. This is how they're doing this. Like, yep. this is why they're doing this. There's no two ways about it. You know? Pure, pure conning people. Uh, and mm -hmm. he calls himself a truth seeker, but he's told so many lies in this hour between you and him. It's ridiculous. And ran away from all of the facts I told yeah. him like, uh, like it was the plague, so... You, here's a bunch of facts. Him, let's move on. <laughs> yep, essentially. Uh, right, this is a good one. Mission of the sky. It's not the sun. From and the sun? No, the sun is... You're saying that daylight is not from the sun? 
Absolutely. <laughs> was, that, was that how loud my mic was to everybody else? That was, seems uh, uh, more abrasive than I thought it there, was. <laughs> there was a couple of points, I think, where you got closer. Um, but uh, okay. I, I, again, I think that was more to do with the fact that they were having issues with the producer. Their producers, oh, okay. uh, like, uh, somewhere in Asia, and they were having internet yeah. connection he, issues, so they couldn't control level the mics and stuff. He did they put a couldn't comment dial in. the levels. Yeah. Um, oh, well. But, yeah, most of, the time, you, most of the time it was fine, but when you got a bit closer, it did clips ev clip every now and then. But um, maybe that's so, why some that people was, were... That, that was the only time that really made me laugh out loud in disbelief. Everything else that he says I know is so stupid, but yeah. I know that they say these stupid things. That was just like, you're saying that daylight is not from the sun? I couldn't yeah. believe that he said that. Like, daylight is not about? from the sun. Absolutely. Like, he doubled down on it. You asked him directly. For sure. Hey, are you saying daylight <laughs> is not from the sun? Absolutely. What the actual... <laughs> Jesus, man. That was, the, that was the one surprise for me in the entire exchange. That <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd that never heard him say that before, me. to be honest. Uh, that's not a line yeah. I'd heard him use. And I yeah. will be covering that. Um, all right. So the entire debate, you've been proving that the Earth is a sphere with the sky. It, you we, can't no, you didn't. It. You just said Absolutely. there's a glass thing in the flashlight. You're just right. doing a middle school science project. You're not actually explaining anything. You're just going, oh, I did a thing in my living room, so all of science is wrong. That's what you're doing. You don't. The 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 I wish I had this slide because the globe. Dave, the optics of the sky mm. are no way to prove the shape of the Earth. You can. You well, can, they are. Like, you've been doing that the entire debate. That's literally what you've been doing the past 50 minutes for the yeah. discussion between it's you and like him. It's like the third time I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and that way that you proved it is not a good way to prove it. Well, then how come I just proved it that way? Like, <laughs> that's well, not if a they response. ignore that you've proved it, then there isn't any proof, right? Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um,. Oh, there's only a few more clips that I, I want to go through, but I, we, I need to expose the stupid. Why is it important to you to hold this belief? What does it mean it's not, to you? It's not important to hold the belief. I'm looking for the truth. Dave, what do you think about that statement? Um, as, uh, no comment. I mean, what do you, the, we all know what, what's going on here. Looking for the truth. How can anyone like him say that with a straight face? It... <laughs> I mean, it's it's interesting. Like, I I I I, tr I really try to understand the psyche of somebody of somebody like this sometimes, and I I am convinced that there is definitely deliberate uh, duplicitousness. There is there is a, a level of deliberate malice going on, but I feel like th it could be a cocktail. You know what I mean? There could be, it could be. Delu there could be delusion mixed in there. Like I, I don't know. Like I don't know what it's like to be inside his head. I don't know what it's like to be him. Maybe he like he thinks the lying is justified by something else. And I I just have no idea how somebody how a brain like that operates. It's, brain. It's very strange <laughs> Give him a bit of credit there, Dave. I mean, frankly, yeah, he's got one. Marvels. It's not a good one, but uh, you know, <laughs> they are medical marvels. Reaching adulthood without functioning gray matter is something to be proud of. You know. Like, yeah, <laughs> but this is what gets me. Like, Dave isn't a young guy. You know, he's he's older than me by by like four or five years. You know, he he's is a middle aged person. He's a fully grown adult. You know, he's gone through school and life, and at this age, he he's still pushing that the Earth is flat. I mean, I almost understand it from people that are younger, right? Trying to figure out the world, not not sure about things, haven't learned much a bit susceptible, but at this age, how can you be either so gullible or such an evil con man? Because those are the only two options mm -hmm. here, right? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, um, the short answer would be money. The longer answer would involve something psychological, like a, a need to have some kind of purpose when you are a pointless person. I don't really know. I mean... It's a uh, it's an interesting discussion <laughs> that yeah. will, would require a licensed psychologist, I think, to dig and into. <laughs> here's him lying again. Forties and fifties and up to the early sixties, they were still teaching flat Earth in no. school. From the thirties, forties, fifties, and sixties. In the nineteen sixties, Dave, they were teaching right out flat of his Earth butthole. In Directly from his rectum is where he found that talking point. <laughs> That's like, just uh, no. 
Nothing to even talk about here. Totally it's, made up. It's completely 100%. Made, right. Um, so the next bit is the, the, the kind of the end of the discussion um, where he completely misunderstands seasons. Got because it. of the curvature, so it has I to spread it. out around, it, around it, a greater area. More. But isn't the sun so large that all of the, the rays leaving the sun are parallel? And, and how would, why wouldn't the parallel rays that are a little off to the left you know, hit us direct? Are, are, there, are the rays leaving the sun parallel, or are they leaving not parallel? Okay, when you have a... When you have a... Right. He wasn't very clear uh, about what you're trying to say here, so I had to kind of break it down a bit in, in my head. All right. So you've explained to him the reason for the seasons, right? The, the tilt of the Earth and the fact that because parts tilted away, you get the same area, the same amount of light has to spread over a larger area, which means less energy per meter squared, Right. And, you know, that's, that's mm -hmm. what causes the seasons. But his argument is that because the Earth is a sphere, right, the, the, unless it's directly on the front of the sphere, the sides should also be a lot colder when it's, you know, night, when yeah. those bits don't have light on. Obviously, it is colder. that It's colder at night. But he it's thinks that it night, should yeah. be as cold I, as the uh, Arctic. Yeah, I had at least 100 people comment on my page just like i know what he was saying there i think i was just so fatigued by the stupidity yeah. at this point at the end i was just like i'm just i'm done trying to make sense of what you're saying but yeah i think yeah you're right what he was saying is why isn't it as cold um at nighttime in florida as it is all the time in the north pole or the south pole or whatever yeah. it is and it's like well okay in in a couple of hours it's going to be receiving that direct sunlight Right, the direct yeah. sunlight, and then the atmosphere retains it. So it's yeah. like it's uh, it's it's he's explaining the day and he's explaining day and night. Uh, yeah, and, you've got radiation cooling and everything. Seasons, you know, basically. the sun imparts energy onto the ground and buildings all throughout the day, and that that yeah. you know, radiates and there's heat. And there's also the fact that you take his argument of well, it should be colder at night. It is, but then think about night at the higher and lower latitudes. That's even colder. So he's right. It does get colder at night, but that entire band that's receiving the more energy is still getting more energy than that band down here that's getting the energy over that area. You know, right? It's yeah. It's, the the angle is constant. Yeah. As opposed to having the direct sunlight during the daytime. Yeah. Close to he's, the equator. To his credit, here he's tried to understand what's going on. Right. Okay. And I can almost see, if you've never had this concept explained to you properly before, how he could come to that misunderstanding, right? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't change the fact that you've explained it in your videos and it's easy to research and it's something that you could easily, very easily figure out, oh, yeah, that's why what I'm thinking is dumb. But instead, mm -hmm. he wants to parade his ignorance and his stupidity proudly. And yeah. I don't and know that, how else to put it. Yeah, <laughs> and and that was it. Yeah. That that was the the, the final point um, of of the debate, um, and it it was hard. It, it was it was hard going, um, but fun to watch. But that amount, like, it's taken us an hour and a half there to go over each point of stupid that he came up with in, in the space of an hour. Yeah, there, there was there and was plenty so, of stupid in between. Yeah. Uh, and there is Funny actually some uh, some clips that I didn't uh, you know I didn't include, but um, that were kind of just repeating the same stupid because you'd explain something to him and then he'd just misunderstand it and you'd have to explain it again, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but those were the individual points, and I think it was maybe thirty individual stupid things that he said, which is impressive. Yeah. So the question not bad. is, yeah, that's about one every two minutes. Yeah, on average. that's not bad. Would you debate a flat earther again, Dave? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't want to, like, oversaturate my channel with flat earth content because that's not what I'm trying to do. But, um, uh, I mean, yeah, it's really easy and kind of fun. And I hope it's helping. I hope that yeah. some percentage of Weiss's followers realized how stupid he is oh, they have and to. stop following him. Obviously, the most vocal ones are going to you know spin it yeah. however they want and continue in their delusion but i'm sure i got through to some percentage of them 
And uh, yeah, I mean, whatever. Line them up. Dubay, oh, what Nate's one of the na- the dumb Nates. Anybody, I don't care. I'll in- annihilate any oh, of you. God. But on a neutral platform. Oh God, you know, it's I'm fine. just I'm just Come I'm having me. a bit Let's of a stroke go, imagining you debating Nathan Thompson, or oh oh, uh-huh. I want to see you debate JM Truth so badly. You've no idea how bad I want to see you debate JM Truth. I need to make that happen. I don't know who that is. I don't care. I'll do that any was the of these clown, people. That was the clown uh, guy that I showed you at the beginning. Oh, okay. Dave, I would pay good money to watch you debate. Okay. I'm going to contact every channel I can think of and get you to debate JM Truth. That would give me content for years. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's like, it's a kind of a thing where, like, I don't, like, this is, I don't want to do this as, like, this is what I do because it's just there's two I have, I'm busy I got other like I'm yeah. trying to debunk the creationists and medical stuff and and also my academic content like I have other I, you know a dozen things that are higher priority but um it's really easy and kind of fun and if someone is stupid enough to want to do that with me I'll humiliate them just as badly as I did Weiss and so, all of Globebusters go um, ahead yeah. <laughs> right. Let me read the super chat. See if there's any questions for you. Uh, Dave Kircher for five dollars says, "Professor Dave may be making the world a better place, but I have five dollars. Who's the best Dave now? Checkmate." Well, Dave, you don't have five dollars because you just given that to me. Ah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Jones five pounds says, "Professor Dave, you need to do more debates. I'll just do one super chat as I'm skint at the moment." Well, thank you for that. You, if you're skint, you really, really shouldn't. I, my, my content's free. I will never charge for my content. I appreciate the super chats, but please don't, if you're skint, you don't need to give me super chats. Thank you very much, though. Uh, Skycloud Observer has been a member for 14 months, says, Professor Dave, uh, the, the debate was a delight to watch. It really was. Um, and we got Second Best Bob and became a new member. And Mark Zayant, who's been a member for 17 months, says, let's make Flat Earth's Monopoly version or conspiracy theories. Mm, yeah, a flat earth monopoly could be fun, actually. Um, Alan Marju for two dollars <laughs> says predicting supermoon is even harder. No Nibiru b- BS. Um, have you ever gone over any of the Nibiru stuff? I've heard of it. Um, it's just like in sort of a wastebasket of like too dumb to address stuff. <laughs> I mean, flat earth is even dumber, yeah, but yeah. um. But they're more vocal. I think it, it's a blend. When I when I pick something to debunk, it's a blend of of uh, how popular it is. Like the, like the popularity has to be something that is a factor. And nobody is talking about Nibiru or whatever. It is. Like I don't hear yeah. that very often, so it's not something uh, that I address. When I was first getting into Flat Earth, I was also looking at some of the Nibiru channels, uh, and they're constantly saying that you know there's this tenth planet off out the orbit of pluto but for some reason it's got such a strong gravitational influence it's going to destroy us and you know there's so much crazy stuff a lot of electric theory goes with that as well of course um, pat in the chat has been around for four months says there is no humanity for con men only humiliation professor dave this beautiful quote belongs on a bumper sticker yet i love it did i say that just now when did i say that uh i i think he's uh paraphrasing you maybe but um, okay, cool. <laughs> it, it, it works. I, I like that. There's you got a few phrases in that debate that could go on bumper stickers for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just tired of it. Like, I, I understand people get triggered by the uh, insults, but look, this is we're we're done. The reason we exist in this post-truth era is because we have coddled to and 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 allowed these people that invent their own realities to present themselves as 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 valid as the real reality. Yeah. And it's a big problem when when Trump said when Trump <clears> says <throat> um, they stole the election and just pulls it right out of his asshole. And then people go and try to storm the castle and try to uh, try to reverse our democracy. This is a problem when people yeah. say the earth is flat because I say so. Uh, it's a problem. Like it, we don't we can't we've got yeah. to stop uh, treating these people as though what they're saying is is, is has a shred of validity. They yeah. need to be humiliated into submission. That's what I think. Yeah. So it's not it okay to say the earth is flat. It's just not okay. It goes against it so much of what we have accomplished as a species that, you know, I, I don't call myself a scientist by any means, but maybe a man of science. I've studied science and, and physics, you know, and I, I love it. And I find it insulting personally, you know, because it's flying in the face of everything that has made this world what it is. How do they think they connect to these debates? Because of science, you know? And they just deny it all. 
I mean, it's profoundly insulting by orders of magnitude more than me calling him a moron. So absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, sorry, everybody. Just kind of, you know, if ever we could quit tone policing what I'm doing, that would actually uh, be yeah. great for me. <laughs> just concentrate on the message. That's what I like to do. Yeah, but you know, mm -hmm. I can be extremely harsh with flat earthers, Dave. I always have been, and that is something you know, people. Some people are going to find that off putting just because that's the way they are. But it doesn't mean we should stop ha putting the passion that we put into fighting against stupidity. You know, because that's an important mm -hmm. thing that, that, I mean, I know that you, that's not really your, what you do in general. You, you like to do the educational content and, you know, you do fight the stupidity like creationists and stuff. But, you know, what both of us do on the internet, it, I think is important. Fighting against anti-science and abject yes. willful stupidity needs to be willful done. ignorance willful that's a ignorance, better way to yeah. put it i don't want to yeah. fight stupidity because it's not a crime to be unintelligent but willful ignorance and the assertion of ignorance above above expertise and knowledge is a is a plague on humanity and 100%. it needs to be snuffed out yeah absolutely um for, for shanti member for 21 months uh post the link to dave's book on amazon if you want to go and check out that awesome book um what's the title again dave is this Wi-Fi organic? A guide to spotting misleading science online. I'm gonna get that. Um, I'm, I ask my <laughs> wife. That's gonna be my birthday present for my wife, I reckon. Um, there you go. So yeah, the link uh, for Shanti put there. If anyone wants to post the link again in the chat, then that'd be excellent. Thank you. Uh, the misanthrop for two dollars says, "I used to be tech I at iOptron Corporation." Um, but thanks, I, I guess. Tax Marshall for five dollars says, "Professor Dave, thank you for helping me through school." FTFE, thank you for helping me through work. Live long and prosper. <laughs> Live long and prosper indeed. Uh, important question, Dave. Trek or Wars? Uh, I'm a pretty big Star Wars fan and not that big of a Star Trek fan. Ooh. I like both, yeah. but I'm more Trek, so I'm guess I'm gonna have to kick you out now. Sorry. Oh, good. Uh, no, <laughs> no judgment here. Yeah. You think you think yeah. the Galactic I'm Empire could beat the Federation? Yeah, I think so. I guess, right? <laughs> I don't know. And they've got a Death Star. Uh, no, actually, that could be a lot of firepower. Yeah. A lot yeah. of firepower. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Raven Zero for two dollars says, "Check your Discord meme for Flat Mars." That I will do. Thank you, um, Mister Marlow for one ninety nine. Would Dave eat fish paste on toast? Uh, I don't eat anything from the sea, so probably fair not. enough. Um, I think that might be someone that I spoke to on Facebook. Uh, uh, they. Uh, I was. T it was a post. Of your your underwear color and the last thing you ate is your wrestling name. And I was blackfish paste on toast. Um, mm. And I think they've come and found me here. So hello, Mister Marlow. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Master Bait, our member for twenty six months, says Professor Dave is one of the best content creators. I one hundred percent agree. Um, you probably are already subscribed to him because he's got two million subscribers. But if you're not, then go and subscribe. Uh, Earthrise has been a member for five months, says the Earth spins at 6,283 milliradians per day. Yeah, those are also big numbers that could scare them. Uh, I like to say yeah. 0.000694 RPM because that's a really small number and hopefully it shouldn't scare them so yeah. much. <laughs> Let's get into the plank length or something like yeah. that. <laughs> Earthrise, oh no, this other one. Balfazar228 from 999 says it must be difficult to try and explain the fabric of space time to those who don't have the space in their heads to understand it and whom it would take way too much time to explain. Um, have you done much, have you done any videos explaining relativity or anything like that? A little bit, yeah. In my modern physics series, I have one very general, very entry level explainer video. And then in the uh, astronomy series, I have um, some clips showing uh, phenomena that corroborate general relativity just things that we can see about like uh, the, the the procession, the perihelion procession of certain stars around galactic center, uh, gravitational lensing, stuff like that. Just sort of a nice video of like, here's how we know relativity is true. Yeah. That kind of a thing. Uh, I don't think I've seen that one. I've seen most of your content, but I don't think I've seen that one. I watch a lot of your content and I have no idea what's going on. I don't know anything about biology. Um, so I, I <laughs> enjoy watching your videos because I love the way you present information. But a lot of the time I'm like, I don't understand half of that, but cool. I might have learned something. <laughs> It's another drop in the bucket, right? We just yeah. uh, expose um, ourselves to information and absorb what we can. Uh, I've got a friend who is studying um, 
uh, immunization, uh, immune technology and stuff um, for, for her master's degree. Um, she visited me last weekend. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, do I'm doing this stuff with Professor Dave. And she's like, Professor Dave, like, his, his videos have got me through my coursework. So, you know, you touch a lot of the world, Dave. That sounds wrong. <laughs> yes, it's a source. It's a source of great uh, satisfaction, definitely to to be helping. Uh, it's awesome what you do. Awesome. Um, debunk flat earth for two dollars says um, when a flat earth model works, I'll eat my shorts. Don't worry, your shorts are safe. Given basher for five dollars says we need to get Eric Dubay to debate Professor Dave. Dubay needs to be humiliated badly, as if he doesn't already humiliate himself enough. Yeah, I'd like to see you debate um, uh, Eric Dubay. Have you ever spoken to Neil deGrasse Tyson? No, you, not, you, no, not on friendly terms. If you could, if you could get Eric I mean, Neil Tyson to say that I, you are taking his place in the debate, Eric might debate. Yeah, you. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I'm on Neil's radar. Uh, I, maybe <laughs> it's uh, it's it's possible he's he's heard of me. I'm I'm not nobody anymore. But um, yeah, he's I don't know. I don't I don't think he's paying too much attention to right, people we're gonna have my to, stature. That's going to be a mission. Um, we have to get Neil deGrasse Tyson to to say that you will debate Dubay on his behalf. Because uh, that would be a good oh, one as well. I, if if it happened on Rogan's podcast, I, you better believe I would do yeah. that. That would be <laughs> so much exposure. I uh, mean, I, I, like for me, the, the purpose of this stuff is uh, I. For, we, the reason I did the thing on Atwood's uh, channel is because he has a ton of subscribers, and I figured I'll probably pick up some subscribers. Yeah, and it'll be really fun to humiliate Weiss. Going on something like Rogan? Are you kidding? I would yeah. <laughs> absolutely do that. I'd get a hundred thousand. So many people, uh, well, you know, out of that. In, in that and, case, uh, I appreciate was, you coming on my lowly 50,000 subscriber channel. <laughs> happy to do it. No, I mean, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll go on almost any channel just for, for a chat, you know. Yeah. It's no problem. Uh, but with the flatter thing, it's like, you know, yeah. I, I like to, you know, get followers and humiliate con men to uh, do and things. And you're very good at it. Things. Like, I'll never forget Thank when you, you brought out that response to Globusters video and the literal Google Trends search for Flat Earth went down. You, you you destroyed it like it was a beautiful thing to watch and those guys that one uh hit 10 million views this week oofed yeah um i've got to video. buy those i gotta buy those guys around of beers or something because like the amount of money uh they must I have paid for like video. a new kitchen and, and the, stuff right <laughs> and the trajectory of my life like it it got me into debunking i mean yeah it's like uh i really owe them a debt of gratitude for <laughs> For, for doing what they did for me, yeah. Um, Christopher, oh, Balthazar228999 says, some guy says a thing. Your debate of patient zero of the COVID-19 pandemic of scientific illiteracy, illiteracy, patient zero is basically every single flat earth and young earth creationist argument. Yeah, yeah, all the arguments from flat earth and young earth creationists are basically, oh, well, someone said this, so it must be true. Oh, that this mm -hmm. guy took a, a video uh, and said that it was a thousand miles away, so it must be true. Um, I misinterpreted what the Bible says, so young earth creationists must be true. You know? That's the bulk of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Chris Remendez, two dollars, says, how would Dave react to Starlink satellites? What What is that exactly? I'm not familiar. Uh, he just asked how you would react to them. I don't know. What do you think of Starlink? Do you think it's a good idea? Uh, just refresh my memory as to what that is. Elon Musk's internet star, um, satellites. Oh, right, right, right. Um, so what is he trying to do? He's trying to democratize uh, internet access? Is he trying He's to just trying to make it or... like, really easy for everyone in the world to get it by putting a bunch of satellites in space that broadcast mm -hmm. internet instead of relying on underwater cables and stuff. Um, yeah, I, I, it, it's funny, actually. One of my best friends is a lawyer at SpaceX, and so he's actually intimately involved with, with some of that stuff. I should, pro I should probe, probe him a little bit for some details. Um, uh, I at face value it sounds amazing. I don't know. I don't pretend to know the goings on of such well, large corporations. Um, uh, it is good. I, I think he's planning um, something like thirteen uh, thousand satellites um, in a constant mm -hmm. orbit, um, and, and he's got some uh, you know a couple of thousand out, out up there at the moment. Um, and the only issue that I can see is what a lot of um, you know uh, astronomers and people that take photographs of the sky. Uh, something like two percent of all photographs of the sky now are they've got Starlink in because mm -hmm. there's so many of them and they're there all the time and they're in very low orbit so they're really you know for sunrise and sunset is very hard to get away from the fact that they're going to be reflecting light so um 
when right. it, the first couple of years it was something like 0.8 percent of all astronomical photos but now it's like two to three percent of all photos taken of the sky at night have starlink in them mm -hmm. which might become and a little bit of a problem for trying to observe what's out there it do have astronomers spoken out against yeah, it? Or? Yeah, there's a lot of them have been like, oh, it's, it's going to ruin what we can see. You know, it, it's going to cause a problem. And they did try to actually, they adjusted the angle of the solar panels um, so that it didn't reflect as much light. You know, they, they, they don't want to ruin the night sky. But at the same time, you know, yeah. we need to advance as a society, right? So mm -hmm. it's like people that get angry about yeah. having windmills in their back garden. It, you know, oh, I don't want a, a wind turbine anywhere near me. Oh, no, it's going to ruin the land side. Well, Okay, give it twenty years. You're not, you're not the gonna, whole state. Yeah, you're not gonna. If you, you don't want renewable yeah. energy, then you're not gonna have a countryside to look at in twenty years. You know. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, in general, I'm very, very on board for giving internet to the whole world because this is how we're going to bring underdeveloped uh, nations up to speed and 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 uh, maybe hopefully have a, a a greater portion of the masses that are vocal and mobile and able to uh, assist in the neutralization of, of nefarious influence. So I want to give everybody the internet, but uh, also I don't really know anything about business or technology or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, but so you, you see the problem with giving everyone the internet, right? Um, the village idiots have been able to escape. Yeah, but the thing <laughs> is, th th there's a difference between giving the internet to the, to the, to the modern world versus the underdeveloped world. Because people in impoverished nations are are a hundred times more likely to try to use the internet to gain the kind of knowledge that is going to lift them up from their circumstances. So I, I get messages all the time from people in in uh, underdeveloped areas thanking me for my content because they're 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 getting an education so that they can find a profession that will allow yeah. them to construct new technology or do something to to better the quality of life in their communities whereas some idiot in wherever the hell in a first world nation all of these privileges are have been they've had since birth they don't need to worry about running water and electricity no. and all of these things. So they're left to their own devices to sit around and conspire about lizard people. Whereas these other people, they're like, I want to use the internet to learn so that I can build and I can do and I can create and I can make a better world, a better life for those in my community. So I feel like there's, you know, I don't know for sure, but I just feel, I feel strongly that there's a big difference in how the internet will be utilized in these other regions that are finally getting internet for the first yeah. time. Yeah. It's uh, interesting to see the way the um, the online community could evolve. Um, there's a lot of potential for good, but at the same time, there's a lot of potential for it to be misused. But that's like anything, right? Obviously, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Tressa Beef Two Pounds says, uh, Professor Dave, do you believe in the multiverse theory? Multiverse theory. I mean, that's the kind of thing where, like, you know, could there be a multi... Yeah, of course there could be a multiverse. I don't know. I mean, I think it would be odd to conclude that this is the only universe. I think there yeah. probably is are more universes, I guess. Um, I'm definitely, however, not a subscriber in, like, a many worlds theory of quantum... Interpretation of quantum mechanics or anything like that. I don't subscribe to... Uh, parallel universes, and we are present in all of them. I just so think you don't that think there's a Dave uh, Frenner that is a flat earther, then? Right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> wearing a dumb, wearing a dumb hat and, and proselytizing all over the internet. Um, but uh, I think I think it would be very arrogant to presume that there could not be other completely unrelated universes. Right? Yeah, um, I, I mean, when you look at quantum superposition stuff, it certainly can suggest that that's the case. Um, but I don't think it's something we could ever really test to determine if it's a fact or not, at least not with our current understanding of the universe anyway. Um, yeah, probably not. It's, yeah. it's way above my head, certainly, and I believe above the head of all of humanity, at least for the foreseeable future. But Absolutely. who knows? You know, I like a quote from years Sheldon in The Big Bang where he says, I subscribe to the many worlds theory and that there's an infinite amount of Sheldons, and I can assure you in none of them am I dancing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not bad. They got a decent line every now and again on the show. Uh, the missing throat for two dollars says I ran out of room. The astronomy nonsense hurt. Yeah, everything that Dave said was quite painful, honestly. Mister Eman, five dollars Australian. Being called a cretin is an insult to you. Flat Earth is an insult to the human race. It absolutely is. And, and Dave put it put it beautifully that it's it's a plague. You know, all these anti-science, science-denying science denying nonsense, anti-vax, young earth, 
creationist chemtrails, uh, flat flat Earth, uh, denying um, climate change. You know, it's a plague. You know that can just be got rid of if you read a science book. <laughs> yeah, and mm-hmm. blow, blows my mind. Uh, Eddie Dean for ten dollars. Last super chat. Thanks. Damn it, I joined late, but I definitely go back and watch you uh, guys destroy them, like you two have done so many times before. You guys are awesome. No, you all are, are awesome. Uh, it peaked about 850 people watching, so I'll thank you very much for that. It, I've, I've had a lot of fun. Um, Dave, any final thoughts on, on how your debate with uh, Flat Earth Dave went? It's, it's good, good times were had by all. <laughs> uh, nothing well, much more to say. I think you did amazing for it being your first d- debate. You certainly put him off of his game. He thought you were an easy mark, and that was a massive mistake for him. Um, yeah. <laughs> personally dave thank you very much for taking the time to come and chat to me I, I really really do appreciate it i know you're an extremely busy guy um but what you do is extremely important and if i can help in any small way spread that amazing work you do then i'm extremely happy to be able to do it but thank you for taking the time to come onto my channel and chat to me today happy to do it thanks for having me no worries um thank you everyone for watching uh i'll be back in a couple of days with another debate and uh, a new episode of first idiots real soon um, please check out Professor Dave's channel. Uh, he's releasing some good stuff right now, attacking the creation. What, what's the name of them? The Creation Institute, is it? Discovery Institute. The Discovery Institute. Young Earth creationists that are batshit crazy. Um, Not necessarily uh, Young Earth, but uh, uh, intelligent yeah. design proponents. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just like he does with Flat Earth, he destroys it beautifully. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, PhD Tony, for popping by. One of my favorite people. Uh, I'll see you all soon. Remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. Just let that play out. You know, Dave, this ending was written to me by, by me for a flat earther when they were trying to mock me, and I stopped. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Before, oh, I'll make a song and mock him saying something. I was like, that's banging. That's now on my outro. <laughs>